two of the most powerful SCPs ever known, a giant sword-wielding gate guardian and the reality-bending cosmic deer, SCP-2845, entered the arena. They're here? What followed was one of the most epic showdowns in the history of the SCP Foundation. Later, in the void. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Savvy, and welcome back to The Savvy Show. And in today's episode, guys, the long-awaited part two of Site 13. It's been too long, but we're going to dive deep today. This is SCP-1730, Epic Final Battle at Site 13. So, yo, if you guys didn't catch the first reaction on my channel, I'm sure if you're a new subscriber, you probably haven't noticed it because it's one of the few SCP animations I reacted to on the channel. You can go back and check it out, or I'll plug it towards the end of this video or on, you know, a card or something. But anyway, this is part two of that reaction. So if you guys are excited to dive deep with me, please remember to smash that like button. Also smash that sub button if you're new on the channel. I'm telling you guys, you love SCP content, you like my reaction style, this is home. You found where you need to be and hit that button so you stay plugged for each and every upload. And with that being said, remember to hit that bell so you can stay plugged so you can be notified right when I post more content. So with that being said, and without any further ado, let's get this show started. Alrighty, SCP-1730, Epic Final Battle at Site 13. Let's go, let's go. It's the mission of the century, a daring rescue into the depths of one of the most dangerous locations in the multiverse, Site-13, otherwise known as SCP-1730. Mm -hmm. When the impossible Site-13 was first discovered, multiple mobile task forces were sent to plummet's depths, and none returned. They were greeted to a labyrinthine nightmare, littered with deadly cognito hazards, escaped SCPs, and mysterious, murderous leeches. Some were trapped along with the civilians they were sent to rescue. Others were killed or changed in unimaginable ways. Oh my Mobile God. Task Force Apollo 3, also known as the Game Wardens, had been sent in on a rescue mission when they encountered a horrifying sight. The captured broadcast of Bobble the Clown, a dangerous SCP known for corrupting and destroying children through its deadly messages. Mm -hmm. But this bobble was different. Much like everything from Site-13, this bobble came from an entirely different dimension. Yeah, it seems like these SCPs are from a whole nother, like what they said dimension is not from the ones that we know in the regular SCP universe. That's what I kind of gathered in the first reaction. So I'm, I'll, I'm so intrigued to see what's the conclusion of this. And he had terrifying information to relay. In the universe where Site-13 originated, the site's psychopathic director, one Elliot Emerson, had struck a deal with the Global Occult Coalition, a controversial government group who intends to protect humanity by killing anomalies rather than containing them. <laughs> Emerson had converted his site into an unethical, unrestrained slaughterhouse and was incinerating SCPs by the hundred in a so-called body pit. But Emerson's game of death came back and bit him, snapping the threads of reality and turning the entire entire site into a dimensionally displaced super anomaly. The game wardens realized they were in way over their heads. Their chances of surviving this place were dropping by the second. The, the game wardens? Wait, who? Who are you guys? Hold up, hold up. Realized they were in him, snapping the threads of reality and turning the entire site into a dimensionally displaced super anomaly. Sheesh. The game wardens realized they The game wardens. So I guess that's just a group of, of the task force that's assigned to this SCP, I'm assuming? If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. They were in way over their heads. Their chances of surviving this place were dropping by the second. And if they wanted any chance of succeeding in their mission, they needed backup. So Site Command called in MTF Tau-5, aka Samsara. Calling in Samsara for a run-of-the-mill collection mission is like using a bazooka to kill a housefly. But for a case as severe as 1730, their skills were not only nice to have, but vital. Samsara are among the best of the best, immortal cybernetic clones forged from the flesh of a god, Whoa. equipped with weaponry and technology that could surpass even that of other elite mobile task force units. Whoa, 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 so they seem similar to the... Oh, I forgot the name of the group. But it was cyborgs that were created by the flesh of the gods, and they were like immortal as well too. So this is this seems like the same group, but humans instead of cyborgs. Unless this is in the past and they became cyborgs from some crazy shit, but like they seem pretty similar. Let me hear that one more time. Yeah, but vital. Samsara are among the Samsara. best, of the best. Immortal cybernetic clones forged from the flesh of a god. Oh no, cybernetic. Then why do they look like humans? What? 
equipped with weaponry and technology that could surpass even that of other elite mobile task force units. The four members of Samsara are so adept at what they do, they earned the nickname Power Rangers among their peers. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I just guess, I guess the animation's off because there's, there's other animations of the Samsara group unit or whatever, the Power Rangers, where they actually look like cyborgs but in this animation they just look like regular humans that have these powers so um, i guess they're the same and they're not different supposedly the remaining game wardens knew that with samsara on the case they may actually survive this thing after all hopefully they just needed to hold out samsara arrived on site not long after packing some serious technological heat including <laughs> arm mounted incendiary cannons shock absorbing leg extensions heat resistant plating and built-in scramble adaptations within their eyes to ward off the deadly cognito hazards Damn. everyone involved was in for the fight of their lives the four samsara agents irantu nanku munru and onru entered via a drainage gate in one of the office buildings above ground and began their descent inside after observing numerous charred bodies they deduced that their must have been a massive incinerator somewhere on site. Emerson's incinerator, theorizing that this was connected to the body pit they kept hearing about, they descended further, feeling the temperature rise as they did so. Due to the anomalous nature of 1730, nothing inside made any kind of logical sense. Huh. Caused by a reality warping machine known as Thresher, the internal geography of Site 13 was subject to constant shifts. The team then split up to cover more ground. Munro and Nanku continued to follow the pipes and the heat toward the furnace, while Irantu and Onru broke away to explore what lay beyond a weak wall. After busting through the wall, Irantu and Onru explored several empty office blocks before finding their way into a control room with a glass observation deck. Okay. While the window was obscured by garbage and human corpses, signage indicated that the incinerator and the body pit were directly below them. The team once again reconvened and managed to activate the incinerator which shredded the mass stuck inside with several large turbines before burning the resulting slurry. The same process that had happened to so many anomalies under Emerson's watch. With Damn, there. okay, maybe it's just me, but this pace is going extremely fast. And how do they locate these places if they keep on changing? Uh, it will probably make sense if I keep on going. The path cleared, Samsara decided to descend via the incinerator, using the drainage pipe as a kind of makeshift tunnel. Eventually, they happened upon the leeches, large, black, and hungry. These creatures seemed to infest 1730 by the thousand. Anywhere that blood or drainage runoff could be found, the leeches could be found too. Okay. They didn't appear to have any connection to an anomaly previously secured and contained by makes the foundation. Sense. They squeezed and wriggled through the cracks in the walls, searching for fresh blood. Onru detected that the leeches all moved with a kind of collective purpose, suggesting a telepathic hive mind. Onru was able to tap into this hive mind using her cybernetic enhancements. And okay, so um, before we continue, I'm assuming these leeches are from this SCP, Site-13, in itself is not from like another dimension, like Bobo or whatever his name, the, that clown, where it was something like that in our universe, the SCP universe, but in this... Site 13, which is his own dimension in itself, there was another, you know, duplicate of, you know, that SCP. But these leeches seems like they are originally from the Site 13, and there's not an anomaly like that back home in, you know, the SCP Foundation um, logs or whatever, or in containment. So that's that's unique. I wonder if the leeches will play a big part. And map the chaotic geography of 1730 through the leech colony's collective knowledge. With this new advantage, they could add a second goal to this rescue mission: find the Thresher device causing all the instability and potentially reduce power to it if possible. But they were on the clock to save the other survivors, as those leeches were sure to get hungry for warm blood soon. They followed the leeches down the most direct path toward the survivors. On the way, they encountered a horrifying creature: the many-limbed humanoid nightmare that functions as Emerson's Ooh. eternal punishment. Emerson. A charred body tied screaming and alive to the platform Dang. where the monster's edge should be. They managed to make it past the monster before finally rendezvousing with Captain Hollis of Mobile Task Force Zeta 9. Other that's 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 what I want to see. Like that, that Emerson dude, I'm assuming it's kind of like the leeches. It's part of this Site 13. And it's not like an SCP that's just within this dimension that is inside Site 13. I want to get more information about the Emerson dude, really. Like he seems pretty badass. Otherwise known as the Mole Rats, as well as the Game Wardens and the other survivors. Mole Rats. There were 27 surviving members of Site 13 staff. Many of 
of which had severe injuries, making it even harder to transport them back to safety through the hazardous terrain. Nice. And to make matters worse, the leeches were back. The team quickly decided that the best route out of here was directly past the Thresher, where they could reduce power to the machine for just long enough to create a stable path of escape. Okay. Nanko opened fire on a horde of approaching leeches with a flamethrower, and everyone began running for their lives. It was a final make-or-break dash to safety. That's a good plan. However, their advance was soon stopped by a strange roped creature drawing a needle hazardous meme on the wall with its claws. When the team attempted to engage, it attacked, exposing additional deadly memes and the dangerous effects of its single white eye. And we're not talking about internet memes here. These are symbols and information that are often deadly to even bear witness to. And for you or I, this would be a real threat, but not to a team equipped with goggles containing cognito hazard filter technology. The battle hey. was cut short when the floor collapsed underneath them and the creature was devoured by something even larger and more monstrous, a gigantic black leech covered in huge red eyes. Yo, there is a lot going on here. What the heck? Where did this dude come from? So is this like the daddy leech out of all the baby leeches moving around? Or did they combine each other to make the super genetic <laughs> multi-eyed leech? What? And it just ate one of those cyborgs. <laughs> Supposed to be immortal. Okay. Wow. This is this this is nutty. <laughs> its entrance caused thousands of leeches to spill out into the hall as the monster screeched and slithered its tentacles after them. Allow us to introduce you to Elijah, also known as the Leech Boy, and a pivotal component of the very existence of SCP-1730. He was a boy with the mind of a toddler, but he had the strange ability to absorb blood through people's skin, hence his nickname, Leech Boy. One of the doctors in Site-13, Dr. Hadley, took pity on Elijah. After all, he didn't choose to be the way he was. What? Director Emerson didn't share Hadley's sympathy. His orders to exterminate all anomalies included humanoids like Elijah. When Hadley protested- Is he part of the GOC? Aren't you part of the SCP Foundation? Why would you want to exterminate him just like that? What the hell? Let's hear that one more time. What the heck? Dr. Hadley took pity on Elijah. After all, he didn't choose to be the way he was. Director Emerson didn't share Hadley's sympathy. His orders to exterminate all anomalies included humanoids like Elijah. When Hadley protested, wow. Emerson had her beaten within an inch of her life while other dissenters were shot. Just because she didn't agree, you beat her to the inch of her life. Oh my god. Dr. Hadley, disgusted by the inhumanity of her superiors, Don't kill her. the perfect revenge. She sabotaged the incinerator and the body pit, allowing a mass containment breach that flooded the site with deadly anomalies. Young Elijah ended up consuming the slurry of the other shredded anomalies, causing him to mutate into a powerful monster, a behemoth of a leech who gave birth to and controlled all the others. He ate other anomalies after that one, you know, scientist got fed up with the other dude. What the heck? And he became this leech creature? What anomalies did he eat? Hold on, wait, hold on. That flooded the site with deadly anomalies. Okay. Young Elijah ended up consuming the slurry of the other shredded anomalies. Other shredded anomalies? He ate other... Causing him to mutate into a powerful monster, a behemoth of a leech, who gave birth to and controlled all the others. Oh my it was God. Hadley's revenge that caused Emerson to panic and activate Thresher, leading to a rift in reality and the creation of 1730, and by extension, all the problems faced by our heroes today. Wow. Some the others fled Leech Boy and began taking a different escape route. How that, was, that all happened from just a quarrel of what you should do with Anomaly. And... <laughs> So this isn't something that just happened out of nowhere. This is the SCP Foundation are at fault of this SCP doing what it's doing now. What the heck? However, while on route, they encountered the dreaded Crystal Butterflies, a dangerous SCP capable of destroying organic matter with a mere touch. Irantu stepped up to bat, roasting the creatures with his arm-mounted incinerator and taking extreme damage to his body in the process. Oh my god. But they didn't have time to rest. With the Butterflies disposed of, they kept moving, heading toward the Thresher. But not all the SCPs were necessarily working against them. Bobble the Clown came in handy at the next checkpoint, manifesting in the monitor of an electronic door and opening the way through. As they continued on their journey, they had to fight off frequent attacks from leeches, losing some of the task force members in the process. Dang. They were also forced to face off against a number of other anomalies in order to survive, such as SCP-2316, manifesting as floating bodies beneath them, and SCP-1370, the which used a huge mechanized body to attack the team of survivors. That was all just a warm-up for the true final battle, though. Emerson? The floor shattered beneath them. 
and out of an impossibly huge chamber, the monster that had once been Elijah wriggled free, reaching for them with huge tentacles and shrieking from its thousand-toothed maw. It was at least 200 meters tall. Oh my god, that's barely huge. reacted to any amount of firepower. It seemed like they were all doomed until Captain Hollis had a truly crazy idea. With the help of Samsara, she led the bloodthirsty abomination down through the cryonic center and into an Olympia-class testing chamber. There, as the leech boy was bearing down on them, Hollis opened the gates to two adjacent containment cells, and something beyond incredible happened. Two of the most powerful SCPs ever known, a giant sword-wielding gate guardian, and the reality-bending cosmic deer, SCP-2845, entered the arena. They're here? What followed was one of the most epic showdowns in the history of the SCP Foundation, as the deer and the gate guardian went to battle against the all-devouring leech. Bro, what? What? I literally feel like they just pulled the deer and the gate garden out of the wazoo. Like, out of nowhere, they just entered the scene. Like, <laughs> we just go I need to hear that one more time. This is a lot of heat, bro. What the? <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it again. Leech Boy was bearing down on them. Hollis opened the gates to two adjacent containment cells, and something beyond incredible happened. Okay, two adjacent cells. So I guess this is the um, uh, um, Site 13 versions of these two SCPs, the Dare and the Gate Guardian, which is, I'm so, still their god tier anyway. But what the heck? Wow, this is wild. Two of the most powerful SCPs oh. ever known, a giant sword-wielding Gate Guardian and the reality-bending Cosmic Deer, SCP-2845, entered the arena. What followed was one of the most epic showdowns in the history of the SCP Foundation, as the Deer and the Gate Guardian went to battle against the all-devouring Leech. While the monster spot, Hollis ordered her team to get the rest of the survivors to safety. She and Moonru of the Samsara team remained behind to prevent any of the anomalies from escaping as the entire base began sinking into the ground from the combined forces of the battle raging around them and the Thresher's continued onslaught on reality. Even if the survivors escaped, would the anomalous developments inside Site-13 escape and wreak havoc on the world at large? That's when Hollis received a vision. A horrific, charred, post-apocalyptic world roamed by inconceivable powerful entities and nightmare gods. It was a vision so horrific that just seeing it nearly broke her mind. She knew what she had to do. The oh only way God. she could truly defeat this terrible place and ensure safety for mankind. While Leech Boy, the Gate Guardian, and the Deer continued their battle for the ages, Hollis ran to Thresher and forced the machine into overdrive. Up above, the remaining members of Samsara, the Mole Rats, and the Game Wardens escorted the survivors to safety. Downstairs, Thresher emitted a blinding white light as the system began over in her final moments, all Hollis could do was laugh. Perhaps it was a laugh of pure insanity, of a mind broken by the horror she witnessed. Or perhaps Just it was a laugh visions? of victory, knowing that in spite of the immense powers all around her, she had won the day. She had saved not only the survivors and her teammates, but possibly all of humanity. And all it cost her was everything. Outside, the survivors had reached a safe distance wow. away when the entirety of Site-13 imploded in a final brilliant flash. When the dust cleared, SCP-1730 was gone. All that was left was an immense crater where the impossible base should have once been. <laughs> Captain Hollis had done it. What a With sacrifice. The pressure machine, she'd taken this anomaly out of the world the exact same way it had entered. It was torn from its moorings on our Earth and kicked into the infinity of space-time, perhaps never to be seen again, along with everything it contained. SCP-1730 was reclassified to neutralized. Of course, the Foundation would have plenty Damn. of other anomalies to pursue soon after, but the nightmare of Emerson's Site-13 was over once and for all. Okay, that was crazy. I didn't think it was going to be that fa like honestly, there was like no like um, it was like all gas no breaks in the beginning. Like it was like no like easing into things. It was like back and forth, back and forth. And it was so interesting that this was created from the SCP Foundation because of a disagreement. And the deer and the gate guarding coming through to kill Leech Boy. Like we didn't even know if they killed him or not, but like. And the sacrifice to oh. yo, I see why you guys really wanted me to react to the part two of this. Oh my god, this I can't believe I took so long to react to it. This was crazy. This was an insane battle. Oh my god, I think there's there might be a part three or like some aftermath um animation 
of this SCP, like what happened after this. But so I might, I'll probably react to that soon. Guys, let me know what you thought about this animation in the comment section below, especially about how Leech Boy came to be. And would you think he's in the wrong at all? Because I think, I mean, he's not, to be honest. Um, it was SCP Foundation that, you know, caused this whole mess. And just the uniqueness of this SCP, just, just have different anomalies from a different dimension, just come out of nowhere. It's, wow, this one's pretty freaking deadly, but it's deceased now. It's gone. It's declassified. So um, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this, please remember to smash that like button, smash the sub button for more content. And unfortunately, that concludes today's episode. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one.